Hello Katerina and welcome to the Slovenia Australia channel. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Katerina, you have a Bachelor of Education in Music, completed piano performance studies, studied voice and conducting. One could say you are totally immersed in music. At what age did you gain this passion for music? Well, my earliest recollections um, are back in primary school and I was about seven and I started learning the recorder. That was actually my first instrument. Does music run in your family? Yes, yes. Uh, my father, Tony Frisk, um, has for many years uh, been in, in bands um, in Melbourne and also um, in Austria as well. Hmm. So beside your father, was there any other person or group that influenced your yeah. You in music? Yeah, yeah, there was. Um, uh, I guess, um, well, actually my father, of course, being in the bands and, and you know, seeing the musicians and, and so on and loving the music, growing up with that, obviously was an influence. But also, when I got to year 11 at high school, there was a teacher who um, was new to the school that year and started a choir and a school production. And... Uh, that for me was kind of a real turning point but she also tried to um, encourage me she encouraged me to do year 12 music in a subject called history and literature which I just loved so when did you decide to make music your career well I think it was around that that point that point when that teacher arrived and I really enjoyed the subjects that I was doing I was doing performance and that history and literature subject and yeah that was that was the point where I thought oh I might might be able to do this yeah Katerina you teach music at high school level in Melbourne what do you aim to tell your students about music well, I, I think music is very personal for everybody um, and it's something that comes from deep within. So um, whether that be using music as a tool for confidence, for, um, uh, for healing, that type of thing, I think, you know, definitely just play music and, um, and yeah, you know, it uh, uh, achieves achieves those aims. I mean, I'm constantly surprised by the power of music and what it can do. So what gives you the biggest thrill of teaching music? Um, I think it's really, you know, having uh, a student who uh, perhaps is not understanding something really well and then having that moment where they they just understand it and you know it's almost like the light bulb that goes off and and uh, and they understand and or they they find something that excites them within music um, I think yeah that that is definitely a great buzz um, and you know things like school productions or working with a choir where you start off teaching them and then they learn the material and then they perform it with such confidence I think there's a great buzz going through that process and seeing the final product you know. If we move to the topic of the Slovenian community in Melbourne how long have you been musically involved in that community? Well, the first performance I can remember while well, I was 16 and I played piano at the um, Springvale Town Hall for the annual ball for the Slovenian Association Planitza. Um, my father's band was playing at the time and then I did a sort of solo performance during that. We even dragged my uh, electric piano uh, <laughs> to the town hall and yeah, performed there. So do you do uh, concerts and recitals? Have you been involved with those kinds of things as well? Yes. Uh, well, being a school teacher, they're, they're happening. You know, you try to organise those for your students. Um, I also uh, teach piano privately as well. And with um, another Slovenian-Australian, Lenti Lenko, he has his own music studio and students, um, a lot of students. Uh, and I combine my handful of students with his and, and we put on a concert twice a year. 
So there are lots of opportunities and, and concerts that happen. Um, where I work now, which is in distance education, um, I also organise, uh, have organised a, a several times a staff choir and I've taught them Slovenian songs and uh, one of my colleagues, who is a, a singer, uh, learnt uh, Zolica and we sang it together for Slovenian National Day. We did a morning tea and we sang that together. <laughs> In what aspect are you musically involved with the Slovenian community? Well, basically I'm involved with the um, church choir at Kew, um, although I've stepped aside uh, for a time, just um, I'm working on other things. And uh, But basically, yeah, I've been working with the church choir, playing the organ um, for services, um, you know, and doing the, the Christmas and Easter services. And, yeah, or, or for example, you know, for Mother's Day, Father's Day, Miklaus, you know, St Nicholas days, we put on extra performances. Yeah. Why is it important for you to be involved with the Slovenian community? Um, look, it's my heritage. I feel connected to it, um, even though I've only been to Slovenia twice, and the last time was 24 years ago. Um, I, yeah, I don't know, I just feel connected to it, and I think, you know, music is a catalyst for that. Um, and a lot of people in my family, my relatives overseas are musicians, so um, I guess, you know, it's a theme for connecting us. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, I feel... And I and the other thing I feel is actually that I um, want to give something. You know, I, I, you know, all those things are volunteer basis, and it's just like a sense of giving. Um, and I think a lot of teachers are like that. You know, they just they want to share. Yeah. Currently, you are undertaking a major project in the form of a book about Slovenian musicians mm -hmm. in Australia called Anthology of Slovenian Australian Musicians. Yeah. Can you tell us how did you get the idea for such a project? Well, that came about three and a half years ago, and uh, I. Um, I attended a, uh, um, a reunion of bands at Q. Uh, the first Sunday in July is always, um, you know, Saint, Saint Day for the church. And uh, they organise a reunion of um, several bands and they play three or four songs each. Uh, I attended that and my parents at that stage were away. Um, they were on walkabout up in the Northern Territory. And so I was missing them and I thought, well, you know, I looked at people on the stage and I thought, oh, they're all, you know, approaching in years and and nobody's really written their stories. There's a lot of stories behind those those people and it, and those bands. And so the, the idea came to me then. So why is this project important for the Slovenian community and perhaps also for the wider community? Well, I think for the Slovenian community, it's important to document um, these these people because often they were um, they were the people who kept uh, the community together, you know, because of dances um, and social gatherings where there was music, and this is where they um, made connections with each other, whether they be sort of in a business or a friendship sort of way, and um, music brought them together. So I think in in the Slovenian community, it's been a very important part, um, especially as there haven't been many of us. So it's been important to bring them together. As so far as the wider community is concerned, well, look at all the contributions to um, to the fabric of, of this multicultural nation. And, you know, Slovenians have played a part in that. Uh, and they've been in, involved in, in festivals and um, community events, many, many, many of those um, which have brought Slovenian music to the wider public. Hmm. How much work is involved in, a, in undertaking such a project? Well, a lot of work. I mean, I mean I, countless hours. I, I, I just wouldn't even know where to start, how many hours have been involved here. Um, you need to find the people. You need to contact them in whichever way, in email or phone or through um, computer over 
Skype, um, in person, travelling and meeting them. And so that, that's, a, that's a major step. And then, of course, is um, actually, you know, getting some questions to them and, and following that through, getting the story out and then following through with um, photographs and, um, and uh, also um, uh, memorabilia, um, recordings, that type of thing. So there's a there's a lot of things involved. So you're editing, you're you're um, uh, writing, you are collating um, photographs, cropping those, um, all of that type of thing. When was some of the earliest Slovenian musical activity in Australia that you discovered? Well, the earliest I've discovered is 1952. There was a choir at Bonagila. Uh, the migrant camp where a lot of Slovenians came to as their first point in in the country and um, yeah there was a small group that formed there and mostly they were men although when the ladies arrived back from fruit picking from time away fruit picking then they had a mixed choir. Mm. What are some of the surprises you've come across about Slovenian Australian musicians? Well I think there are surprises in Every, every story that's been told because um, obviously, you know, this is a chance to find out and, and to really un, unveil and, uh, and reveal um, the things that have been, um, uh, the things that that group or individual have, um, have achieved and, and what they've done. And I guess this is surprises in everybody. So um, I found the whole thing fascinating I haven't you know sometimes there's just been a name and then you know to hear the whole story is you know is, is obviously an interesting interesting experience otherwise I wouldn't keep doing it <laughs> in the process have you discovered so many musicians that you did not know about absolutely a lot of musicians um, and I thought I knew quite a few however um, no there's there's quite a lot of um, musicians that uh, are involved in all sorts of styles and of course you speak to one and then three other names emerge so um, yeah it's been it's been a, a big project a lot more than I thought so what type of uh, music styles are Slovenian Australian musicians involved with well, not just Narodna Zabavna, although all, I guess I guess that's uh, a large part. However, there are musicians that are involved in classical music, in jazz, um, in rockabilly, punkabilly, um, in um, uh, country styles. So, yeah, there's there's a wide, wide variety of, of musicians, yeah, and styles. Let's say that money is no object. In that regard, how would you present a concert of Slovenian Australian musicians? Well, and hmm. where? Yeah, and where? Okay. Well, um, I think the most iconic place is is the Sydney Opera House. You know what a lovely venue on a beautiful harbour, the bridge in the back background, uh, and yeah, I think that would be. That would be a, an amazing concert to invite people from all around Australia to come and perform in the in the Sydney Opera House would be wonderful. Love to do it. If I win Tad Slotto, I'd do it. <laughs> uh, Roughly, right. how many pages will your book be? Well, about three hundred, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, because I guess you know everybody um, has. You know, some of these older musicians have a long story to tell, so there's more, more involved in it, and I want to be thorough. So, it, yeah, somewhere around that. Yeah. When will your book be released? Uh, on the 12th of May, 2013, and uh, Slovenian Association Planitza have been kind enough to be um, uh, very keen to be involved when I approach them. And uh, I'm very grateful for them to um, provide um, the venue and uh, facilitate this um, occasion. I'd like to commemorate with a concert and uh, also a bit of multimedia presentation as well because there are a lot of photographs and uh, videos and that type of thing. Um, yeah, and also there'll be some speeches, I guess.
Yeah. Are you thinking about having a CD as well with the presentation? Yes, the as I've been going along, I've been asking people for recordings because I think that's important to keep it alive. Um, you know, with a book on musicians, there's no point in just reading about the musician. It'd be really nice to hear either them or material by, you know, that's composed by them. Yeah. And how can people order your book? Well, uh, I have um, a couple of methods. Um, there will be a hardcover book and there'll also be an e-book. And uh, the hardcover book can be ordered directly through me and uh, you know and they, they can email their order um, and, and actually uh, pre-order they can pre-order it before that time um, I'm giving a discount for those who would like to do that and yeah and so they'll be through um, email or they can just ring me up as well um, yeah so and and there'll be a website coming too to download it Katarina, thank you for the interview and all the very best with all of your musical activities, including your book about Slovenian musicians in Australia. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you.